Let's go along, let's go on, talking about this good old way. Let's go on, let's go on, talking about the Lord. Aren't you feeling better, talking about this good old way? Aren't you feeling better, while talking about the Lord? Oh, oh, oh.
Praise the Lord. I'm sure we'll have this liberty that's in the house of the Lord this evening. Yeah. I love the unity that we have in the church. Yeah. Free that, that we really are. And all these good testimonies. That you know that your testimony will help you to be an overcomer. Yeah. You'll be able to overcome that in different ones begin to speak about the enemy trying to present something to you and you have to tell him tell him that you know the Lord did that you overcome him that way Amen. we need to overcome him though Amen. praise the good Lord now, I thought I want to I want to read to you from the 11th chapter of the gospel of Luke and uh, very should be familiar scripture but really, if we're doing it right, it would all be familiar with Scripture. Right. The Bible said it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. When he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When you pray, He did not say if you pray. He said when you pray. Right. So we know as the children of God, we've got to pray. Amen. He said when you pray, say, and you quote this with me if you want to, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut. And my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, Though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. Now, you have, and I know it's like we don't have a whole lot of friends sometimes. We, we have acquaintances, people we know, but do you have a good friend? Are you a good friend? And if you had a good friend, no doubt if they came to you in the middle of the night and they needed you, and they begin to knock on your door. 
Not simply because it, that, that you're your friend, but maybe that the importunity. Uh, they find themselves in a, in a strait. you give them what they needed, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, let me put it to you this way. If a, if a stranger came to you and uh, they began to beg you for a piece of food, this and he said bread, if they came to you and they, they began to beg you, you give them something to eat, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. I believe you would. Mm -hmm. And that's a stranger. But Jesus went on and He said, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Can I speak to you just a little bit this evening, a few words of faith? Ask. Seek. Knock. Jesus did not say, Everyone that asketh might receive. He said, For he that asketh receiveth. He said, He that seeketh not might find. He that seeketh findeth. And he said, And he that knocketh, it might be open, could be open. He said, It shall be open. Would you love for the Lord to come to you this evening with whatever you're praying about? Would you love if the Lord, would that please you so good if, if the good anointing of the Holy Ghost would move on with the good prophets and the Holy Ghost speak to you and say, I shall do this for you. Oh, yeah. How good mood would you be in on your way home? Yeah. How happy would you be? Would you be looking up? <coughs> would, would you feel like traveling on a little bit? Just sat there and said, Oh, if Lord, if you'd only come to me and tell me that you would do this, how much that it would help me? Well, the prophet is not moving on me, but I am reading you the Word of God. And there has never been anybody as great as the Word, Jesus. And this is the Word of the Word. Who is and was and shall forever be the Word of God. And He said, And if you knock, it shall be open. Well, what is it? Why would you be why would you have to knock? <clears throat> Evidently it must be locked. If, if, if not, you could just turn the knob yourself and open it up yourself. But something is locked up. <clears throat> something is secured and it's out of reach. You can't get to it. Anybody have anything like that right now that you you like to be able to do but seem like it's locked up? Yeah. I like to give victory but seem like it's just on the other side of the door and I can't get the door open. But Jesus said, if you will knock, I'll open. Yeah. Now, he said, shall be open. Who do you reckon is going to be the one that's going to do the opening? I'm reading to you in the Word of God. He said, I, I'm, I'm he that opens, and no man can shut it. He said, I, I'm he that I'll shut it, and no man can. So, he's the one that opens the door and closes the door. Amen. And I just asked you, and I told you, that if a stranger came to you begging at your door, and you knew that it was legitimately, you, you wouldn't know from Adam, as the saying is, from the goodness of your heart and the charity of God that He put in your life, you would, if you had it, give them what they needed. 
If you could do that with a stranger, don't you think the Lord will do that with one of His? Yeah. They, they sing it. Sometimes we kind of overlook it. He does know my name. He knows your name. He knows you because you belong to Him. You've been born again. You're part of His family. He doesn't have stepchildren. He doesn't have second in line. Everybody is the same before Him. So he says, in other words, he's the one that does the opening and the shutting, right? right. So he's saying, if you'll not, I'll open. Well, I don't know. It seemed to me like there'd be a few more smiles on our faces this evening to know that Jesus, who cannot lie, has said, if you'll not, I'll open. Amen. Sometimes we just kind of get a little weary with not. He said, if a son, now I said a stranger, now shortly with this, he said, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Now stone, you know, especially sandstone, you get the river bank, get kind of rounded off, you can make find one that would look like a little piece of bread. It might look like it, but it wouldn't be it. And they might favor it, but you get no use out of it. You couldn't use it. There'd be no need in having it. If you have a son that asks you for bread, would you give him a stone? He said, if you ask for a fish, would you give him, would you give him a serpent? It, it might look like it, but it's going to hurt him. It, it might look like bread, but try to eat it and hurt him. It might look a uh, favorite sort of a fish, but it's a serpent. It'll bite. It'll hurt them. Would you give them something that will hurt them? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Well, if your child asks for bread, you give him his bread, wouldn't you? Yeah. If they want some fish, mama, you give him a piece of fish, wouldn't you? Hey, Sister Shirley, your boy called you up and said, Mom, I'd sure love to have some of your, whatever your favorite is that he likes so good. You fix it, you take it too. Because you love it. That's just the way that it is. But well, Jesus said that if you then, being evil, who? You know, I heard somebody's feeling it. If the Lord said, talking to these, these around the back, and he said, you're, you're evil. If you're evil, you being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. Now you know how to take care of your children. And you know how to show love to your children. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Amen. Hello, somebody. You mean the Lord doesn't have the Holy Ghost in a lockbox in heaven and nobody can get it? You mean to tell me that He's not up there just around the throne of God? You mean to tell me that any child of the Father, if they will ask and they will see and they will not, you mean to tell me any one of us here can receive good things from the Father? You'll find over in Matthew in the 7th chapter and 11th verse, uh, he said to, to give good gifts, good things. And then over here in Luke, he says the Holy Spirit. Well, I believe the Holy Ghost is a good thing. Amen. I don't believe you'll find anything better. <coughs> if you'll ask, he'll give it to you. Amen. If you'll seek, he'll let you find it. And if you will knock, He will... Did you hear me? He will open the door. I said to her this evening, and I begin to read that, and I begin to think about this... this just bear with me. Just this beautiful door. I don't believe that it would be some ugly door, but to the blessings of God, uh, uh, Jesus said, I am the door. So I begin to me, think of this beautiful door. And behind that, is the blessings and the depths of the good things of God. That we're just on this side and the only thing keeping us from those gifts and those blessings and those great things of God is that door. 
And the only thing keeping us from getting a hold of them is asking, seeking, and not. Praise the Lord. What do you need from the Lord? Now this one that came, they had a need. A friend showed up. And it was a great dishonor to have company in the Middle East company come and you didn't have them something to eat and give them... I mean, it was a great dishonor to them. That's where this man is coming from. I, I, my friend showed up and I don't have anything to give them. Give me some bread that I can feed them. Give me something to give them dinner. They had a need. Do you have a need? I thought there's mothers that are sitting here this evening. Mothers in the Lord. Elders, if you read the qualifications of elders, it's almost like deacons and so forth. Uh, sisters in the church can't be elders. That's a position for men. But they can be mothers. Amen. And it's more than just being an old woman. You can smile. <laughs> Those that have fought that good fight. Those that are they're still working on their course. Those that have been keepers of the faith. Amen. Now I begin to think, have it, it, you heard my mother say there's something she's been praying about. And, and the Lord's not done that yet, but she just believes that He's working on it. Yeah. And I, I begin to think about other mothers in the Lord that are here. That great things that they have brought before the Lord and they have stood at that door and they have knocked on that door. They have asked, they have prayed. To ask, He's saying pray. Pray. To seek, He's saying strive. And go in search of the Spirit. Seek out and to knock. Tarry there and wait for the Lord. And I begin to think of different ones that's got things before the Lord. Great things. And the enemy would come, just like you heard them testifying tonight about how the enemy would come and try to present them defeat. Present them doubt. Tell them all the bad things and try to convince them. But you know they're still standing at that door and they're knocking. They're asking, they're seeking, and they're knocking. And I do not believe that God is going to let that go unanswered. What you got before the Lord, that you put the time, you put the prayers in, has God ever failed you anywhere? Has He ever failed you? I'm, I'm being fair. I'm not asking you if you've ever failed the Lord. Has God ever failed you? Now, they don't mean He's done everything you wanted Him to do. They don't mean He's done it the way you wanted Him to do it. He might not have worked the way through which you thought that He should have. Man. Nevertheless, when it was done, it was done. Yeah. And God never failed a soul in this building. You reckon He's going to start failing now? No. Oh, we're in the dark days. We're in the last days. We're in the last of this, this wicked age that we're living in. So what? That doesn't make God a failure. God is not going to fail. He said, if you will knock, I'll open the door. Now, what better promise could you want to see? What better promise could you want? Sister talking about how she felt like she didn't belong and, you know, just what a failure and all this. But the whole time she was feeling that way, God, on the other side of the door, was preparing her a little apartment a place where she could live. And when it came to it, and she got up out of the bed, and she went, she laid on her face, and she said she cried in the floor. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm not going to lie that because sometimes we're so weak, it's about all the sound we can make. Amen. But you know what? The Father heard. Yeah. And when she knocked, he opened the door and said, I made a place for it. Mm -hmm. There's your place. Move in tomorrow. Why, if God can do that, what do you reckon he's got on the other side of your door? What's standing on the other What blessing of God is on the other side of the door that's in front of you? Praise the Lord. Sister Brenda, as I stand here this evening, in my heart of hearts, I believe that Terry is going to pray. I do not believe that man will leave this world long. I don't believe it. Not for a moment. 
Not for a moment. Sometimes to bring to the certain place they got to get, God has to do some things. Yeah. But I, I still, if, if they called in the middle of the night and said he suddenly was gone, I still believe in the middle of the night, God will come to that man and rescue him. Amen. I believe that. Amen. Because she stood at that door and she has asked. Yes. And she has sought and she has knocked. And this word of God would have to be false for that not to work. And this word, you'll break down, I'll break down, but this word of God will never break down. Praise the Lord. What do you got before the Lord? Charlie Walton, what's on the other side of your door? I wonder what great thing that the Lord has sitting there all this time. All this time that we pray and, and we might worry and we might go through. But I just wonder all this time if the Lord could just think if she could just see what's on the other side of this door. She would start pounding even harder. Yeah. And when I hear that, just right, I'm going to open this door and I'm going to let her have this. I wonder what it might be there. But Keith, when I read this to, this evening, I thought, have you got on my heart? And, and I began to think about that, that brother wants the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And, and I read over in Matthew. And I thought when I read that, I felt like going over to Luke and reading how the, the Lord said that, that the Father would give the Holy Spirit. Yeah. To those that ask him. Amen. And I, I believe just on the uh, listen to me. I don't know how thick that door is back there. We could measure it. I don't know how thick the door is that's in front of you. But I believe just on the other side of the door is the Holy Ghost. I believe he's standing there and he's waiting for the Father. As Jesus said, I go and I pray to the Father and he send you another comforter. And you know Jesus prays for us every day. Just to that point for the Father to give that word and that door flies open, you get the Holy Ghost. We talked, we heard stories of faith this evening, testimonies of faith. I never got together with nobody. Never talked about what little bit that I had tonight, but I, I just get them to testify. My sister in law had no idea what I was going to get up and read to you. But did you hear what she told that woman that she was working with, working for? She said, Talk to the Lord. Talk to, yeah. Talk to Him. Yeah. Talk to the Lord. Yeah. Well, sometimes we feel like maybe I, I just don't feel like I can pray. I, I just don't feel like I can I can pray like I need to. Well, then just talk to the Lord. Talk to Him. Tell Him what you feel. Tell Him what you want. And they used to sing it. Call Him up. Call Him up. Tell Him what you want. Praise the Lord. Do you believe that the Lord has got enough power that you could ask Him in a way to tell Him what you'd like for Him to do? That He can give you right down to the very detail of what you, your prayer is before Him. Amen. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I might well just go ahead. Over there is a, a you call it a, a prayer answered child. After I was born, Mama began to pray. She began to just ask the Lord. She said she, she went to him and began to pray that she wanted a daughter. And she even told him the eye color that she wanted and about the size. She could tell you more about it. And when that girl was born, it was exactly the way that she had asked the Lord to do. Amen. Right down to my daddy's eyes. Yeah. God can do anything. Amen. Amen. Lucy, I wonder. <laughs> What is on the other side? Of your Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Have you thought about this? Have you thought about what might be just on the other side of that door? Praise the Lord. I told you tonight that Jesus was standing right behind this door. If you had any sense about it, you'd come up here and knock that thing over just to get to where he was at. Amen. Well, I wonder what is waiting on the other side of the door. Is it healing? Is it the Holy Ghost? Is it maybe the salvation of a loved one? Yeah. Is it, it could be anything. You remember all the years ago in the old world the how they had their, their little thing. They'd say, you want door number one or door number two or door number three? 
I don't feel like it's multiple doors. I feel like just exactly what you need, God's got one door. One door. You don't have to choose all these different choices and it relies on you that God knows exactly what He wants, that He's designed just for you. And here's your door. Now, who feels like maybe asking just a little bit more? Maybe just seek Him just a little bit further okay. and not just a little bit longer. What is on the other side of your door? Do you feel like tonight that you have your door? I, I, I'd like to get it over the way I feel it. I feel like I have my door. Come on. I have my trial, my need, what, what I need God to do, and there's my door. But then you have your experience and what you need God to do for you. And at the end of that long hallway, there's your door. Yeah. Well, aren't you at least a bit curious? Maybe you might want to go and knock on it a little bit. Wouldn't it put just a little curiosity down in there? Maybe want to go and try to peek through. But I tell you this, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They said prayer is the key to heaven. But faith unlocks the door. Your prayers are the key to that door that's in front of you. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. It might not seem like much, but I feel this in my soul. I don't know who. It might be multiple ones that are in need. Somebody has a some great need before the Lord. And I'm not talking about this little old simple thing. We sometimes folks will, they, you know, to them maybe it seems great, but sometimes it's simple things they're asking that they can do. Yeah. But I feel like it's something great. Yeah. Great that you need the Lord to do for you. Yeah. And how close is it? I believe some have been so close you've walked right up to the door. You can't knock on the door unless you get close to it. Who did I say the door was? You can't knock on the door unless you get close to it. Praise the Lord. He might want to get close to Jesus. Would you like to get close to Jesus? Would you like to get so close enough to Him? Oh, Lord. You ever see little babies come up to their mama or their daddy and they start pecking them on the shoulder? What are they doing? They trying to get their attention. Praise the Lord. He might be trying to get the Lord's attention. Yeah. Lord's to goodness, children. Has anybody been trying to get the Lord's attention? Oh. If you're not been trying, that might be why you're still lingering outside in the hallway. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't know why we bring it this way, but here we are. How did that say go? I read it one time and I thought, well, somebody had a good idea. While we're standing, waiting for the Lord to open the door, they said, praise Him in the hallway. Praise Him in the hallway. We're going in. What's behind your door? What is it? What do you need? What do you want? Well, it'd be so simple for Jesus to walk in our midst tonight and He could go to everybody here and say, child, what would you have me do? Had you not read where he would go and just bring the blind to a different one, what would you have me do? <coughs> Sir, that I might receive my sight. They didn't ask for silver or gold. They didn't ask for fine home. When you're blind, there's only one thing that you really want. You want to see. The crippled, they didn't ask for you know, chariots or whatever. There's one thing they wanted. They wanted to walk. Those whose children was being tormented by the devil. And the Lord would ask them what they would want. They didn't ask for money or all these servants or things. They wanted the devil to leave their child alone. Did they get what they asked for? Well, I got just what I need. Did you get just what you want from the Lord. If you've not got it yet, that means you're on this side of the door. And you just have to <coughs> keep right on knocking. Right. right on knocking. Now, the Lord referred to the, the Jews around at that time. He said, if you then being evil know how to give good things to your children, 
Well, we know that our Heavenly Father, there's nothing evil about you. God is love. He loves us. He's concerned about us. He's just got, I, I wish I could get that over to you, how special that He feels in my heart. He has your blessing. When we was little, Christmas time, they tried to get all the kids the same amount of presents. Everybody got something. And when it came that day, they put our name in what was ours. And we knew that that gift, I knew that was mine. Somehow we couldn't shake it. Rattle around, see if we could try to figure out what it was. But nevertheless, that was mine. Behind your door is your gift. It's your answer. It's your miracle. You don't you tell me God doesn't do miracles anymore. He does miracles every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Praise the Lord. Melan. Look to your right, right beside you. Yeah. Mirror. Yeah. Yes, Mirror. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Look at your leg. Mirror. Right. Man. Don't tell me God can't do this. Yes. We just have to be willing to go and ask and see for not. Amen. Wrong. I've had people tell me at times that they would do some certain things. And they didn't do it. They liked it. But when Jesus said, He that knocketh, it shall be opened, that is written in heaven. And when He said shall, He meant shall. So if you've got one that you like, maybe you might have loved ones you want to see praying, if you'll knock, you shall see it. It shall be done. If you have healing, you have different, different needs. There's all kinds of... I try to be careful because there's all kinds of needs that's in this place. And what one might need, another might not need that. They need something else. But the good news is, and my mom will begin to kind of allude to, the Father has a vast storehouse. Riches beyond compare. Whatever that any of His children need, He's got in plenty of supply. Amen. We just have to go to Him. Say, Lord, would you open it to me? Please, Lord, I need this. I need this from me. Lord, I, I, can, I can get my peace of mind. I can get my mind back if you just do this. I could sleep at night maybe. If, if I knew that you were going to do this, I could have my, my wits about me. I, I, I could live, Lord. I feel like if I go on like this, I'm poor man and I can't live like this. It was just on the other side of the door. Now, if I told you it was a million miles away, you'd have a reason to be discouraged. I'm preaching to you tonight that it's just on the other side of your door. Man. It's up to me and you get him to open it. I love the good Lord. It's just a little bit that I've got. I want you to look up. Take courage. We need to encourage one another. I'm not going to tell you it's too hard. Try not to tell you that it's too great. Try not to, to talk about how powerful the devil is. Children, we serve the living God. We, I heard a man this the other, the other day. He said that Fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. No, 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 no. No, the Bible said the living God. Yeah. If it was a living God, that means there'd be other living gods. But there's only one that's alive. He is the living God. Whatever you have need of, He's got it. He's got it. He has it. Anything. Anyone to go. Here and there to get it. It's here. Just on the other side of the door. You hear me? Just on the other side of the door. Wow. 
Do you reckon the Lord would forget you in, in among all these people? No. No. He can't forget us. Amen. We're engraved in the palms of His hand. Amen. He can't forget us. Can't forget us. Every time that He runs His hand together, He thinks it is. No one. We're down here. He's up there sitting with the Father. Up there, high and lifted up where He should be. But He knows. He used to live in this world and He knows what we're going through. He knows the battle that we face. What do you have me of? And on the other side of your door. Now I can't open your door. You and I can pray together to get the Lord to open your door. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you've ever heard that way or not. I'm willing to help you knock. I'm willing to help you pray. If we all pray again, wonder, wonder how many doors, wonder how many doors will begin to swing open. Thank God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mama, I remember one time the Word of God. A good man of God was locked up in prison. They beat him. They shackled them to one another. They put yeah. them in the innermost part and they locked them away. Uh, praise the Lord. Yeah. Along about midnight, they started knocking. One, I don't know who started it. I don't know, I don't know which brother started it. So one of them started singing. The other started singing with them. They began to pray. Somebody got a hold. They began to knock together. When they begin to knock together, guess what happened, children? Doors, every door in the prison begin to swing open. Yeah. Every lock on every prisoner there turned loose and set every man in the building free. I wonder how many doors would begin to swing open at ages if we'd all begin to knock together. Lord, open to us. We've got many needs in this place. Lord, we've got many ones troubled with many things, but you've got the answer to them all. I wonder, instead of being depressed sometimes, and maybe, maybe we ought to sing and get a song together. Yeah. Maybe we ought to pray together. Maybe we ought to seek the Lord together. Get that door opened up. Get these good people baptized in the Holy Ghost, the people healed and saved and delivered. God has got it. He's got it all. And I love the Lord Almighty. Don't get placed to the devil. I'll let you pray when you get ready. Sing, shout, whatever Lord can give you to do.
you know, um, uh, I sort of, you know, whether to dance or not and, and say that the word was preached tonight and brought back this. This is what you can do.
the blessing is he that overcome, for he shall walk with me and walk. Ain't that wonderful? Yeah, amen. Oh, yeah. I'm going to hold on to it. I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord for every testimony that we got to hear tonight. Praise his holy name. I thank you for everybody. God bless you, Lord. I thank you for everything. He's praise such, God. Praise he's so good. God. He's praise so good. God. God is so good. Praise he's so good. Lord. I thank you. I thank you this night.